Welcome back guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna do another video. This one is different however, because we're gonna be doing some herringbone going up a fireplace wall. Now, first things first, we already did the base. Now we're gonna do the wall, but there's one problem. We have tile already on the walls. Before I do anything, I obviously I have to demo this. I did end up taking out these boxes or these pillars in the fireplace they were created out of mdf so it was pretty simple to take off and once i did that i kind of visualized it and i i noticed it would have a better all um surface area showing the pattern of the herring bone so after installing the engineered hardwood before putting down this tile i had an inch space difference in height and what i did is i used half inch ditra and a quarter inch plywood so I didn't want to continue here and run it up. And then by the time I get here, things are off. So what I'm going to do or what I decided to do was just find center of the floor itself, shoot my laser up the center, mark it, and then work off of my two pieces here. And then just gradually work this way, gradually work uh, the other way. So I'm going to go mix the mortar right now. I'm going to mix it um, very thick. That way it's not going to fall off the wall when I put it on. And I'm also going to back butter the tiles too. And when I press it, it'll give it um, a tighter bond. So once I have my line that's plumb that I want to run off my tiles off of, I can slowly work my way up until I get to the top underneath the mantle. And then I'm going to use my sliding T bevel, which I'll put that back right along the bottom of the mantle and the, the arm that swings, I can line that along the face of the tile. And that will actually allow me to replicate that angle directly onto my tile. So that allowed me to speed things up, finding the angles and wanted to make sure that I didn't overcut any of them especially along the top even though i'm going to be using black grout i wanted to make sure that everything seems very proportionate the spacers that i'm using for this uh herringbone pattern they are one eighth spacers so it's it's fairly um it's fairly big but it's not it's not too big you know it, it gives it an overall uh nice space so when you do fill it with the grout, it will have, you'll still be able to get like a nice contrast. So for the mortar that I'm using, I want to mix it not too thick, but not too watery. I, I do want to have a good bond when I'm pressing these pieces onto the wall. And that's why I said earlier, I will be back buttering these pieces, meaning that I'll be spreading a little bit of mortar on the back of the tile let full coverage that way when i press it 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 will act like a suction cup now to actually spread these tiles i'm using a one quarter trowel meaning that between each tooth of the trowel there's a quarter space in between each tooth So when I started this pattern originally, I, I don't know if I got zoned out from the just looking at the pattern, but I did make a mistake. And one of the pieces along the top is tilting right instead of tilting left. It's probably you probably won't notice it. I noticed it when I was putting in my final pieces. I did have the option to obviously break it out and put a new piece in there, but because I knew, um, you know, your average homeowner or, or, you know, person that comes to your house is not going to notice it. Maybe, um, maybe a guy who does tiling for a living, but, um, you know, it was one piece and it's right at the very top. So I just left it. Um, if if you were doing this for someone who's very obviously particular and has a keen eye for detail you probably will want to switch switch that out 
So you'll notice along my side, I'm just taking the measurements from the top of my tile to the bottom of the tile to wherever my red laser meets. And that will basically give me the measurement that I need for that piece to fit. And once I did complete this fireplace, I did go put my laser back up, come back with a grinder and actually just clean everything up. Um, I wouldn't advise everybody to do this. I would advise you to try and get it as nice as possible as you can. Or you have the option of using a trim that goes along the edge of the tile and it, it just gives it an overall cleaner finish. I thought about doing that, but because I know I'm using a black grout, once I apply that grout, I'll be able to make it look like it's more part of the fireplace as opposed to having like a beige edge showing. So I was able to get away with that and not have to worry about using a tile edge or, or trim that goes along the edge of that. So you'll notice once I get to the bottom where that orange Ditra or that orange floor is exposed, I ended up breaking those out and putting full pieces down, obviously in the same pattern and the same direction, just to make it look obviously more, more clean. So once I finished that side, I worked my way going to the left side of it and I literally just copied the same procedure. So you will be able to see um, along the top where the two triangles are close together, that is the piece that needed to be switched. So I noticed when I was putting on some of my mortar on this wall on the left hand side, I mixed the mortar a little bit more watery than I would like. I would have liked it a little bit more thicker and I ended up having to um, correct a couple pieces like when I pushed it on there, it, it would start to sag a little bit down. Typically when you're doing this kind of tiling or in a bathroom, for example, you're usually starting at the base and you're working up that way. All your weight is resting on the very bottom tile or your, the very bottom of your shower base or your bathtub. So it's not a problem. Everything will still remain level as you work your way up the wall. This one, on the other hand, because I'm working from the top going down, there's nothing really supporting the weight of the tiles going down. And that's why in the beginning, I said I was going to mix it a little bit thick. But for some reason, this mixture wasn't as thick as I would like. So I had to pay a little bit more attention to this side and constantly double check and triple check to make sure that I wasn't um, slopping or slouching on one side of the wall. So right here is an example. Um, I'm going to show you guys how once I press this and I put these clips in, you'll see that they, they want to fall down just a little bit. See how they're drooping and then I have to re push it back up. So that's what we wanted to avoid. Um, good thing it, I was close to the bottom. So it wasn't that much of a, an area where I was struggling with it. I was able to, um, correct it and then put the pieces there to accommodate the weight of it and to hold it up. So I would just advise making sure that you have the right consist consistency when making your mud. 
or mixing your mortar, I should say. So here's the pieces that I was filling in. And then I realized beside that last triangle that um, that piece was supposed to be turned the other way. So you see the chalk or the powdery looking substances around the edges of my tile. That's where I used the grinder and I grinded them nice and clean, nice and plumb lines and nice and level across the top. So like I said before, if you're not familiar, you know, using a grinder, you're not comfortable. I, I would suggest just trying to get those lines perfect the first time when you're installing them. It'll save you a lot of um, hassle. And like I said before, it'll help you not to redo the work over if you do make a mistake or, or overcut the tile. So here I'm just using the black grout. This product is a product by Maypay. And what I like about their grout is it doesn't have any color dis discoloration. So whether you're using um, a gray or a white, it, it'll be consistent throughout your whole tile, your whole tile bathroom. So I don't typically tile herringbone. This is the first time I've actually done a herringbone pattern. And what I would suggest is try to get your starting points and get everything um, to the best of your ability before actually putting them on the wall. So once I have this grouted, I'm going to go and wipe it over. This actually took me probably about, uh, I want to say three or four wipes to get it. So when you're wiping out your grout, you want to make sure that you don't wipe out the grout in between the tiles. So try not to have too much water on your sponge and just try to wipe off the excess on top of the tile only. So here's the finished product turned out really well. Um, I'm, I'm happy. The only thing that I, I messed up on was that piece at the very top that should have been turned the other way. So besides that driving me crazy, I think everything else turned out really well and I'm, I'm very happy with it. If you guys like what you see, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll try and update some more videos for you guys to help you get through your everyday DIYs and how to spice up your house.